Six Nations 2024, folks. The final of the round four game sees Wales, who are winless, hosting a somewhat lackluster and much changed French side. Let's go through the squads. Some stats, recent history predictions, and you guys can let us know your thoughts on how this one is going to go. Uh, Wales certainly could use a bit of a bounce back because they're none from three thus far in their Six Nations campaign with one more game after this one up against the Italians. A win over a kind of disappointing French side would certainly kind of ease a bit of that uh, negativity which has been floating around. But, you know, uh, when you hear Gats talking, he still sounds pretty optimistic. And, you know, the squad is young and there's certainly some bright spots in the squad for the French. they got a bunch of injuries, suspension and... Um, yeah, it might be a bit of a new look French side. We'll have to wait and see. For Wales, they have made a handful of changes, as I mentioned. The front row uh, sees Ryan Elias get another start at the number two jersey. One will hope the line-out operates a little bit better than it has done at times when he's been throwing. Aserati and Gareth Thomas continue on as the props alongside him. Will Rollins gets his first start of the Six Nations campaign alongside Adam Baird, which means Daphne Jenkins has to switch to the back row for this one, which apparently he's not done in his professional career in a starting role. He did mention in the press conference that he has shifted to number six for Exeter before, but it's been a wee while, uh, certainly pre-professional days, that he um, had a start at number six. But Gats mentioned the kind of size of the French pack, and it looks like he wants to go size for size by bulking things up with having him uh, there at number six, uh, Tommy Riffle and Aaron Wainwright have been both very impressive this Six Nations campaign. I mentioned some bright spots for Wales. I'm not, I'm not uh, just blowing smoke when I say that. I do genuinely feel like a lot of these uh, Welsh guys have stood out. Tommy Riffle, certainly one of those guys, the second top tackler of the Six Nations, the most turnovers, one of the Six Nations. He's been phenomenal. Aaron Wainwright's had the second most carries of the Six Nations. He's been really busy from that back row. So. Yeah, genuinely some pretty pleasing signs from some of those kind of more senior players in what is a, a young squad. Thomas Williams and Sam Costello, 9-10, uh, so that's a bit of stability there. But where there's a bit of change is the midfield. So no George North and no Nick Tompkins for this one. Owen Watkin comes in at 12 and Joe Roberts comes in at 13. So unfamiliar, I guess, uh, compared to the kind of recent partnership which North and Tompkins have basically had a lock on but Gats did talk about wanting to build a bit of depth there and Joe Roberts finally getting his knee in the right place so um yeah we'll see how they go against and also changed uh French midfield too Rio Dyer has been impressive out in that left wing he has busted 12 tackles which is first equal in the Six Nations this year so he is a danger man Josh Adams maybe hasn't lit it up as he has done in previous Six Nations, but he's certainly uh, a stable guy to have there in the on the right wing, although I still remember that penalty uh, he gave away earlier on in the Six Nations, which hopefully he won't be repeating by knocking the ball into touch. And then uh, Cam Winnett, speaking of guys who have been really pleasing, a uh, bunch of carries from the back, a bunch of run meters. I think he's, um, you know, he's doing all right there at the back with... Wales having a bit of an exodus of fullbacks. It's not been a position of weakness for Wales, the Six Nations. Bench-wise, Elliot D, Domachowski, and Dylan Lewis. So with D dropping to the bench, the props are the same. Alex Mann drops to the bench to make way for the captain Jenkins. And the number six jersey, Mackenzie Martin, is still there. And three backs on the bench with Gareth Davis back into 23, Johan Lloyd and Mason Grady. So a bit of changes, the main area being the midfield and the captain switch from the lock to back row. Uh, for France, they have got several changes. Aldrit is back at number eight. That's good news. He missed out the last game due to injury. He captains the side. Jalibert is out injured, so that means Thomas Ramos has to play there at number 10. Now, he's had the most uh, run meters for France thus far in the campaign, but he's also been playing fullback mostly, where you tend to chalk up a few more run meters like Cam when it's been doing for Wales. So uh, International 10 is a uh, is a tough job. We've seen Ramos do it for Toulouse and he's done it a little bit for France, but certainly a starting one away 
uh, in Wales is going to be a bit of extra pressure for Ramos. Now with Dante being suspended after his red card in the last game, we've got Nicolas Deportea getting his debut at number 12 alongside the veteran uh, Fiku. So I'm sure Fiku will be able to provide any guidance that that fella needs. Biel Bire is back into the 23 after being a late scratching in France's last game against the Italians. And he has been... Certainly, I think, one of the more dangerous guys um, when he has played. One start and one game from the bench in this campaign. So good to see him back. And Peno, certainly always dangerous. Second for clean breaks in the Six Nations, but also first equal for turnovers conceded. So a little bit kind of hit and miss, I suppose. And then another debutant at fullback, Leo Barre, who has been uh, a real danger man in the top 14. Uh, we'll see what he can do at international level. The rest of the Ford pack by Marchand uh, Antonio. So Marchand gets his first start of the Six Nations with Malvaca dropping to the bench. They are bolstered also by the return of Thibaut Flamont uh, in the second row. And alongside him, Emmanuel Miafu, who is a gigantic human being. Talking about that French pack size, he is... A very, very, very large, but also a skilled rugby player. So be interesting to see how many minutes he plays in his test debut. Uh, of course, switches to a more familiar number six jersey after filling in for Aldrin at eight in their last game. He's France's top tackler. Olivon is France's second top tackler. He's there at seven. And as I mentioned, Aldrin, who's won three turnovers. Uh, and as always, the kind of French top carrier back at number eight is good news. And Le Grec gets a start this week. Uh, ahead of Luku, who drops to the bench. So a lot of changes in the French side. Maybe with their kind of form being lackluster, a bunch of changes and a bit of a fresh approach is what's needed, even if Gaultier's hand has been a little bit forced by some injuries and by suspensions. But yeah, bench-wise, Mavaka, Telfa Fenua, and Georges-Henri Colomb. So debut for him, uh, the big prop. So congratulations uh, he certainly is, only like 25, so certainly got a bit of growth in his game. Tofa Fenua continues on on the bench, Romat and Boudéon. Uh, two loose forward replacements, so just the two backs in Luku and Moefana. Stats-wise, the French pack is large, as I mentioned, but Wales, with their pack, have been pretty adept at scoring tries from malls. By my count, they are at three tries directly from malls this Six Nations, so that's encouraging. Uh, for France, keeping 15 guys on the paddock will certainly be important. They've had a couple of red cards thus far, which is not ideal for winning rugby games. You certainly give yourself a big old uphill battle when you're doing it with a man down. Um, France have been conceding 4.3 clean breaks a game which for context is relatively high and certainly higher than the numbers they had last year. So when the defense is getting broken, it's kind of that catastrophic break. But Wales are even higher. They're at 7.3, which is the most in the Six Nations, which is concerning. Uh, France's knock-ons have been a bit too high. I mentioned um, Penaud has had a bunch of turnovers conceded. Jalibert had a bunch as well. So it's been a little bit inconsistent. Sometimes the high balls have been troubling them. Uh, Wales' discipline has been good, especially compared to France. But... Their attack has been, I called France a bit lackluster earlier. Sometimes Wales' attack is a bit lackluster. Like their meters per carry uh, is is low, like um, 2.5 meters a carry. All the other sides are around 3.5. So Wales genuinely need that bit of extra punch in the go forward. Maybe the new midfield can help out with that. But remember, it is a pretty young uh, Welsh squad, which is still very much in a development phase. Um, last five games, they all go France's way. It's been a while since the Welsh have tasted victory over the French, including a couple of games in Cardiff in 2022 and in 2020, 27-23, a French away win, 13 points to nine, French away win. So it tended to be pretty close games in France, although the average score across the last five games is 30 points to 22. So the games over in France have tended to have bigger margins. Last year's one was 41-28 which was a bit more of a blow. But as I said, the games in um, in Wales have tended to be a bit closer. Uh, Predictions-wise, the bookies are saying France by six points. And the rugby forecast algorithm is being a little bit more conservative, saying France by three points. So despite the fact they're a wayside, their form has been average at best. Poor, I would say. Uh, France do go into this one as favourites, but very kind of narrow favourites. It is on a card if the Principality uh, gets says the roof is going to be closed for this one. So hopefully we get some uh, entertaining rugby on display. Three o'clock local kickoff. 
which I think is four in the morning for me here in NZ on a Monday, but um, I'll be getting up to watch it. Luke Pierce from England is the ref. You guys let us know your thoughts. A bunch of French debutants and a much changed side. Do you think that will inject a bit of kind of freshness and a bit of energy into the French, or do you think the disruptions and a bit more Welsh consistency will finally see them break their duck for the 2024 season? You guys let us know your thoughts, and uh, I'll talk to you guys again soon. See ya.